Chapter 2 Lysel watched at Damon with his bloody paws flexing to his side and his lips drawn. There was no need for an explanation, it was clear or as clear as Lysel wanted to see. Leave us, Tracker, Lysel said glaring at Damon. Lysel's eyes changing from brown to dark blue. Tracker hesitated, and then he turned and stormed out of the kitchen. As Lysel strode up to Damon, Damon breathing heavily changed from that fierce wolf inside of him. Now he stood calm eyeing his father in only a shredded pair of jeans. With Lysel's eyes deepening to a dark blue, his fist raised. It came down on the marble counter causing a crack to make a line from one end of the bar to the other. Catching his breath he calmed and his eyes narrowed, and he moved to Damon. Damon lowered his eyes to his father. Don't you have enough sense to know that's not permitted in here? I expected that from Tracker, but not from you. I thought you were the smart one. The rational one. Damon didn't say a word. His eyes swung up. His jaw tight. He stared down his father. Lysel noticing Damon's lack of control, and he said, You have to leave and leave now. I'll make up something to tell your mother. You have no respect for order. You aren't an alpha yet. Why do I have to go, father? It was Tracker who provoked me into a fight. Damon's tone soft and patient. His voice lost its intensity now that he had time to think. But it was you who struck the first blow. If you're that easy to be rattled, then you're of no service to this pack. You will have to leave to get your priorities straight. No matter what Tracker said, it wasn't Tracker who struck the first blow. What if he had retaliated or instead of me walking in here, it had been Wilder or Drayton? They would have seen my two sons at each other's throats over a female. And a were female at that. What are you saying, father? You would have overlooked it if she had been like mother. A human. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that you have to leave and leave now. And do not question me. Lysel eyes locked with Damon's. He thought it would have been Tracker he would have to send away. He could understand Tracker. Tracker was the hothead, not Damon. Tracker had been the one more likely to skirt his authority. Saying nothing further, Damon lowered his eyes and head and turned to face the door leading to the back of the ranch. Before his hand touched the doorknob, Damon pivoted around with his head bowed and eyes downward as if pleading with his father to forget what he had done and what his father had seen. Did Tracker tell you that he could be the father to Thorne's unborn child? Damon was the one who brought information. Not because he wanted to cause problems, but because he believed that the truth would prevent future problems, and for his father not to know this would be far worse for the pack and his family. If Lysel thought a fight between Tracker and Damon would have been tragic, then what will it be for Tracker to one day tell Thorne that his pups aren't his but Tracker's? I know all about it. Thorne is aware, but he made a choice not to do the DNA test. You still have to leave, Damon. I will take care of the situation. Right now I have to contend with your mother being pregnant for Wilder. We have to hire more people, and you know I don't like bringing humans from the outside into our home into our lives. Our staff is getting old and sick, but what can we do? Lysel shrugged, accepting the inevitable. So that's what's driving his father, Damon thought. His jealousy of his brother. Not enough time to spend with Adrian and accepting strangers. He's taking over jobs he left for Wilder. It appeared that one trait had been passed on from Lysel. The weakness of jealousy is consuming his father and a few of his sons. When will I be able to home, father? Damon questioned, as if he was a little boy sent to bed without his supper. Maybe around the holidays. I'll let you know. But you should stay at the cave until I tell you it's safe to come back here. Your brother Harper will be home soon, and I'll send Harper after you. Damon smiled. Harper, he chuckled. Harper wouldn't go near the woods. Since he dropped out of Princeton to run Hunter's Tech Company, I don't recognize him. Wearing business suits, 
and that picture of him all dressed up in a tux. If I ran into him on the street I would think he's a human, and not my brother. He took nothing after you, father. More like on mother's side. I have three hot-headed sons, and I don't need the other three behaving like animals. Harper is. As usual Damon corrected his father by saying, half human, half wolf. And his father needed to remember that. He could want civilized sons, but they had to follow their nature, and sooner or later that wolf part would reveal itself whether Lysel wanted it or not. Lysel corrected Damon. He's a Samsa, and I doubt that he will forget that. Unlike someone I know, Lysel said meeting Damon's blue eyes. Damon lowered his eyes, and then his head. I understand, father. I know what I've done. It won't happen again. If it does, I will be forced to permanently banish you from this pack and our family. A werewolf needs his pack, and I hope you understand this before it's too late. I hope you know that I'm doing this for you and the pack. I understand. Hunter has returned to Samseville. He has a home on the outskirts of town, Damon said. He's busy now and hasn't had time to come to the ranch. He said he'll visit mother soon. Please tell her. Then Damon remembered something as he strolled to the large stainless steel double door fridge. He reached for three bottles of water and set them out. He didn't drink them because he liked his water warm. He would take them with him into the woods. Damon stood silent as if delaying the inevitable would prevent his father from sending him away. Cupping one in his hand and turning it around as if reading the writing, he glanced up at Lysel. I saw something curious maybe months before. I'm not sure how long, but there was a child seated in a limo. When it cried it reminded me of a werewolf cry. It may be nothing, but the man had a curious stare in his golden eyes. He wasn't a werewolf but some kind of shifter. Could it have been? When Lysel turned to see who was entering the kitchen, Damon stopped his conversation and Lysel forgot about it. His concentration fell on Lysel's soft brown bright eyes. They change when he sees Adrian, his eyes change when he's angry and when his wolf is present. Damon followed Lysel's eyes to see his mother Adrian. She stood before him, her belly swollen with more than one pup. She gave Lysel a warm closed smile and walked around to hug Damon. Damon had a look that he needed a hug, and she gave it to him. Although Damon a yearling and ready for a family of his own, she knew he was needy. Adrian knew enough about the fathers of her children to know that Lysel had been needy and the most jealous of them all, and so were his sons. And that's why she held Damon for the longest. She pulled away and pushed back his long hair and said, You need a haircut. I know, mother. I'll get one today. Adrian seemed satisfied with the answer. She walked to the warmer oven, opened it, and pulled out her lunch. As she walked past Lysel with bread in her mouth, she leaned in to give him an air kiss. He wanted more. He caught her hand as she passed trying to stop her, if but for a conversation, but she pulled her hand out of his and kept walking. Damon saw the expression on his father's face as he turned to follow Adrian. Damon caught Lysel's arm. Don't father. You will make it worse for her and you. You know that she's pregnant with Wilder's pups, and during this time she doesn't want to be bothered with anyone but him. You knew this. You said she acted the same way when she was pregnant with us. Lysel smiled remembering his time with Adrian, and hoping Wilder would stop gloating about getting her pregnant. He had Drayton to thank for that. Drayton appeared to be perfectly satisfied with his one pup, especially since he thought he was sterile. But Lysel was just the opposite of Drayton. He wanted as many sons as possible, and he got them all at one time. Six male pups. He thought that would be the end to Adrian, getting pregnant after the birth of his sons. He smirked and bragged to Wilder and Drayton. And now this. Now she's pregnant, and Lysel can't have her the way he wants. After the door to the kitchen closed he turned back and Damon had disappeared. 
Lysel sat alone. Alone with his thoughts of how it used to be with Adrian and his sons. Damon trod out into the cold night air, leaving the warmth of his home and the protection of the Samsa pack to sleep in the woods.